Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Right now, RAM and GPUs are ridiculously expensive, and for you to get into PC gaming right now, you have to spend crazy amounts of money for even a decent setup to play games at a measly 1080p. People will blame crypto miners, magical fairies, and even aliens, but none of that matters if you can't actually game. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications and yeah, that's pretty standard stuff. Here's a little question that I often ponder myself. Have you scrolled through your favorite PC parts website and seen those really cheap AMD A8 APUs and you think to yourself, how bad can they really be? Can I play games with the integrated graphics? In this video, we're gonna find out by putting the cheapest A8 APU up against the cheapest Ryzen APU, the new Ryzen 3 2200G, and we're gonna see which one is right for your next budget gaming setup. Did you think that I was gonna forget about the new AMD APUs? Nah, never. Before we build anything, let's talk about the actual parts that we chose for this little experiment, if you will. Firstly, the APUs. We chose the AMD A8 6500, which sports a dual core configuration with a base clock of around 3.5 gigahertz that turbos up to 3.8 when it's required, yeah. It also features integrated graphics, but we'll talk about that bit a little bit later on. Next up is the Ryzen 3 2200G. This little guy is super popular right now, and it crowns an unlocked four Zen cores with eight Vega GPU cores with a base clock of three and a half gigahertz, and it turbos up to around about 3.7. As I mentioned earlier, RAM prices are just bananas right now so to keep this test inside some kind of budget we went with eight gigabytes of DDR4 2400 Kingston HyperX RAM lastly the motherboard since mini ITX AM4 boards are pretty affordable and quite popular right now we went for the gigabyte AB350N gaming Wi-Fi mini ITX motherboard it's got all of the features of his desktop size brethren except it's ridiculously small and yeah it's small did I say that before? Anyways, let's get into some building and some benchmarking. All right, first things first, I'm gonna grab the motherboard out of the box and put it in our test bench. If you wanna see how I built this test bench, there is a video in the top right hand corner right now. All right, next up, I'm grabbing the APU out of the box, but before I do that, I'm gonna install the RAM because yeah, it's there and yeah. So when you install RAM, just be very careful and apply pressure to both sides of the slot. So this is kind of like showing you guys how to build a computer at the same time. Now on each corner of these AM4 CPUs, you'll see a gold triangle and that aligns to a triangle on the socket as well. And that's the way you put it in. So yeah, you drop it in the socket. And I like to put a little bit of pressure on the CPU as I put the socket arm down. All right, here comes the cooler. So unlike most other AM4 CPUs, you don't have to remove the retaining brackets that come on the motherboard from default. You just attach it with this retention system. Yeah, it's kind of weird and weird looking. Now I'm just going to go ahead and plug in all of the things to make it work. It's going to plug in the front panel power, going to plug in the SATA connector for the hard drive that we've got and just every other little bit like the actual 24 pin power and the CPU power itself. The moment of truth. Does it power on? Well, yeah, it looks as though it's all good. All right, so the version of Windows that I'm installing here is Windows 10 Enterprise Edition. And the reason why I use Enterprise is because I have many, many licenses for it. And yeah, all of our computers run Windows 10 Enterprise. I won't bore you and let you sit through the whole install process. We've just speed it up and, and get it all set up. I actually don't know why I'm showing you guys how to install Windows. Okay, so we need to update the BIOS on this motherboard so it will support our CPU later down the line. One of the other things you want to do in the BIOS is actually allocate the maximum amount of video memory to the APU. And yeah, save your settings so it works. Okay, so we're gonna be running a few different benchmarks on this system. Cinebench being the first one, the next being Unigen Superposition in 1080p medium, 720p low, and <laughs> for a laugh, in 4K. And as you can imagine, the results are 
fairly unspectacular. Now that all our benchmarks are done with the A8 APU, it's time for the 2200G. So we're going to rip out that CPU, probably never to be used ever again, and put in the pizza of resistance. That's right, align the corner to that corner of the socket again and drop the guy in. Put a little bit of pressure on the top of the CPU and pull down the arm. Now, here is something that you actually will need to do, and that is remove these retaining brackets from the socket to fit. Guess what cooler we're using? Ha! <laughs> We're using the Wraith Spire from a Ryzen 7 1700. I had it laying around and for the next stage of this build, which is in another video, we're actually going to be RGB-ifying it. And since the Wraith Spire has RGB built in, as you're about to see very shortly, yeah, it fits the build. Once again, we're running the exact same benchmarks. We're running Unigen Superposition in 1080p medium, 720p low, and 4K for all of the lols. Now, I ran these benchmarks on a few other GPUs I had laying around to just compare how the AMD A8 9500APU and the 2200G are face off against some real GPUs. And as expected, the results are fairly unspectacular. For the 720p low preset in Unigen Superposition, it's quite clear that the 1060 and 1050 Ti absolutely blow 720p away. However, the A8 9500 came in with a very low 34 frames per second and the 2200G at 54 frames per second. Now, these benchmarks are all only showing the average frame rate. The next test we ran on Unigen Superposition was the 1080 medium preset. And as you can see, the frame rate drop is quite significant, with the 2200G averaging around 14 frames per second and the A8 9500 APU averaging around 9 frames per second. Let, let's see what it did with 4K. There are no surprises here at all. I'm sure this was to be expected that the 4K performance would be almost non-existent, with the 2200G only hitting 5 frames per second and the A8 9500 a measly and eye-watering slow 3 frames per second. Hmm. Last but not least, the Cinebench results. As you can see here, the 2200G got a Cinebench multi-threaded score of 568, which actually absolutely smashes the A8 9500's measly 138 points on a multi-threaded Cinebench test. It's safe to say that you won't be using this CPU for any type of content creation. I want to address the elephant in the room, the A8 APU. The real reason we bought this was because most of the current AM4 boards don't actually support new Ryzen APUs and they require a BIOS update to work. The easiest way to do this is to actually buy the cheapest AM4 chip that's supported, flash the BIOS, throw in your shiny new Ryzen APU and you're ready to rock and roll. In conclusion, if you're wanting to buy something really cheap as a basic word processing machine with the ability to browse the internet and listen to music, then the A86500 is most likely for you. If you want something with a little bit more kick that will enable some light gaming with those Vega cores, then the Ryzen 3 2200G is probably for you. That being said, for a few dollars more, you can buy the more powerful Ryzen 5 2400G, and that's also pretty great value as well. But as with all things Gear Seekers, this is not the end of our Ryzen 2200G story just yet. Make sure you're subscribed with those notifications turned on to see the real reason why we bought these parts. Man, you are in for a treat. 
If you're thinking of buying any of these bits that I mentioned in this video, we have links down below and you can purchase them there. Every purchase that you make helps us get more awesome things to keep making these fun videos. If you like this video, then please like it and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you obviously know what to do. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and we out. That's pretty obvious at this point, right? <laughs>